investors. These are investors that simply buy a stock if they're seeing inflows into their, their underlying ETF. When it comes to pure performance over the long haul, passive investing is beating out active investing. Only 23% of active funds could beat out the average return of passive funds in the 10 years before June 2019. A lot of these trends have kind of pushed down the level of participation by institutional investors in the U.S. equities markets, mostly because they're under greater competition from passive funds, which don't trade as much, their fee structures are lower, and because of that, the more active funds you know, tend to benchmark closer to what the passive funds do. They're trying to turn over their portfolio fewer times so that um, they don't have the expense of trading and they're cutting costs. And that cost push them more towards uh, electronic channels than more human and more expensive channels. After the financial crisis of 2008, regulators moved to crack down on the cash investment banks could use for risky bets. If you remember, the financial crisis was started in part because of these hugely risky bets that investment banks like Goldman Sachs, um, B of A, Merrill Lynch uh, had taken. And so when, when regulators saw that, you know, they said, look, we have to cut this out. They created something called the Volcker Rule. And the Volcker Rule really prohibited or at least tamped down the hedge fund-like bets that these banks could do using their own money. With banks strapped for liquidity, they didn't need as much manpower as before. Prior to the financial crisis, banks provided double the liquidity that they provide today. So on a numbers basis, this arguably means that half of the traders that were required prior to the crisis are no longer necessary. For these reasons, most big banks are moving away from trading. The profitability question for trading is also a driver of banks moving into other higher margin areas within their business models. And really this cost pressure and this deflation is driven by tech, so it's driven by technological advances that have created a cheaper environment in which to do everything. It's also been created by price discovery. It's very easy for consumers to shop around for the lowest cost option. Um, given the acceleration of information availability in today's day and age. The decline in trading jobs and revenue hurt the big banks and large investment firms. Banks like Goldman Sachs instead are focusing on a new venture, consumer retail businesses. This is still, you know, the classic white shoe New York investment bank. And something like 40% of their revenue still comes from trading, you know, trading bonds and, and stocks. What is Goldman Sachs doing? They're moving into Main Street consumer retail businesses like Marcus, where they want to gather deposits, which are a cheap source of funding, and make loans. So this is a perfect example. If you look at Goldman Sachs and their strategy, they're moving into something that's a bit more diversified, that's a little bit less volatile. From quarter to quarter, you see trading can result in a lot of volatility. You're going to see the traditional banks get smaller. You're going to see the electronic players, the Citadels, the Virtus, the Jumps, the Jane Streets, the the HRTs of the world, I think they're, you're going to see them get bigger. If you look at the trading community that's being hired today, they're not the traditional traders, finance, MBA background. They all have a very strong uh, quantitative bent. When we think about the rise of quantitative traders, so these are still human beings that are developing the algorithms. It's currently built out by humans but it could very quickly turn into pure algorithms that learn on their own through machine learning. It's a very difficult time for the institutional brokerage um, community. On the other hand, I think it's a really good time for individual investors. I think they're getting better value and all those fees that were going to brokers and to the buy side are actually you know, staying in the investor's pocket.